This is a Honda four-cylinder engine that's capable of handling upwards of a thousand horsepower. So how did Honda, the same company that built this, <laughs> make an engine so good that people are swapping it into everything from Miatas to Ferraris. Well, today we have a completely disassembled Honda K20A engine. The very best version of the K series from the Type R. So we're gonna rebuild this engine and examine it piece by piece to find out what makes it such a popular engine. Welcome, Welcome to, to Donut. Donut. <laughs> so what we have here is an Acura Integra. This is a DC2 with a K20A swap, which makes it about as close to the DC5 as we could get here in the States. The K20A makes 250 horsepower and redlines at 8,600 RPM. <laughs> I like that. Now, most cars redline a little bit close to like 7,000 RPM. They don't feel like they enjoy being up in those higher RPM ranges. But that's not the case with the K20. These things love it. And this one, this one goes to 9,000. Now, the popularity of the K-Series engine began to soar as early as 2003 and 2004, as car enthusiasts and tuners began to realize how capable this engine is. Fast forward 22 years, the K20 and K24 are as popular as they were back then. And that's facilitated by a massive and robust aftermarket, which is really a testament to the engine itself. Now, if you're thinking about doing a K swap yourself, just know that there are almost 20 variants of the K series engine. Here they all are. But apparently there's something about this K20A variant that makes it so much more special than all the other variants, and I think we should find out what that is. Right? I think you're right. Yeah. Let's go to the shop. All right, Joey, we got a bunch of parts on the table. I'm excited to get this thing put back together. And look at this. This is the main building block of this build, our aluminum block. Now the K20A is an inline four cylinder engine, making it extremely small and compact. They have a lot of good balance due to the mirrored piston movement. So pistons one and four are synced as well as pistons two and three. And because of that, you have an inherently very well balanced engine. So this is a square engine and there are also over square and under square. Over square is when the bore is larger than the stroke and that's good for making a lot of RPM. Inversely, under square is when you've got a smaller bore and a longer stroke, which is great for making torque. And a lot of times that's the way diesels are. So this is kind of a happy medium in between both of those. Yep. All you need to know about this thing is that it just revs up really high yeah. and that's where it makes its power. Which I like that. Okay, so we're about ready to drop our crankshaft in, and this crankshaft is forged like many are, and of course it's balanced with these big counterweights on here. When they build this engine, they balance the crankshaft with the rods and pistons installed. That's stuff that you usually see in full aftermarket builds. Pretty cool to see it in a little four-cylinder from Honda. One of the distinctive features of the K-Series is that it uses this bed plate that serves multiple functions. Typical engines will have an individual crank cap that's placed over the crank to keep it in place. Now with the K-Series, that's integrated into this bed plate. This bed plate also acts as a girdle and that helps strengthen the bottom end of this engine. Nice. This comes from the factory, which is super, super unique and pretty cool. What I gotta do is torque these down. I'm guessing it's a torque plus angle. There's probably a procedure, so I'm gonna need your help. You finger tighten it, let it sit, and then torque it. Our tool doesn't actually do that. The other thing we can do is do dots on the bolts, then do like a protractor to 56 degrees, and then do like kind of a line of sight to that. That's so much work. I know what 60 degrees is. Okay, here we go. Boom. Boom. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in terms of reassembling this engine is put in some new piston rings. These are for the engine, so hopefully we won't have to do any filing, but we're gonna measure to make sure. And what we're gonna be measuring is what's called the end gap, which is the gap between the two ends of the piston ring when it's installed in the cylinder. Get it down a little bit by 
hand. Then we'll grab our piston, and using the piston helps to flatly and safely move the ring down. We're gonna measure the end gap with a set of feelers gauges. So basically what we're looking for is to get our feeler gauge in that end gap with light amount of resistance on the feelers gauge. That piston ring measures out great, so I'm gonna do the rest of them. Then we'll put the rings on the pistons, then put the pistons in the block. Just gonna butt it up to the top of the deck, and then Jerry's gonna hammer it home. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Oof. Ooh. Now what's the deal there, huh? Yeah, it's messed up. <laughs> Throw that back in? Okay. It's just one, one fell swoop. It's getting caught. What is happening? Does it feel like bottom? I think it's gone. Oh, here we go. Well, that was one down. It wasn't quite as smooth as you'd like, but it worked. All right, let's flip it over, get that cap on. Okay. You're so strong. Here we go. Exquisite. it. All right. Okay, now to make sure she rotates, and she does. Here. Lovely. Now the pistons have a couple of features that we're gonna talk about. The first is the four cuts in the top of the piston that correspond to the four valves per cylinder. So you have two intake and two exhaust. We have a raised dome top here, and that helps create a compression ratio of 11.5 to one. Now, compression ratio is the ratio of the volume inside the cylinder when the piston is at bottom dead center compared to when it's at top dead center. So you want a higher compression ratio because you're gonna make more power and you're gonna get better fuel efficiency because that's what we're all after. You know, more MPGs when we're building a nice K20A thousand work power inline four banger. <laughs> okay, so we're reinstalling our oil pump. This oil pump is a little bit different than a lot of other ones. Many oil pumps are driven directly off the crankshaft by way of splines on the end of the crankshaft, but this is driven by a sprocket with a chain to another sprocket. All right, so now we're installing the windage tray, which is just a tray that basically covers the crankshaft and separates it from the sump of oil. And that just keeps like a lot of splashing and sloshing of the oil down, which keeps power up. We're about to throw the oil pan back on. Before we do that, I'm just cleaning off the old gasket material. Clean, clean, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be right next to this strap. You're still way off. Working in the garage eats up a lot of time, which is why we have today's sponsor, Factor. Factor makes eating healthier easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your front door. Factor meals only take two minutes to make, so you'll always find time to meet your nutrition goals, even during your busiest day. Factor has a wide range of breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, plus they've got food for everyone's taste. You can choose keto, vegan veggie, calorie smart, or protein plus, Today I'll be eating roasted garlic chicken. My favorite part about Factor is that there's no prep and no mess. So don't waste your precious gas going to the grocery store and head over to factor75.com or click the link below and use our code donut40 to get 40% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com and get 40% off your first box with code donut40. Finally got our head back from the machine shop and they did a great job. So they obviously machined it so that it creates a nice smooth mating surface to our block. We have new intake valves. They cleaned up the exhaust valves as well. This thing is looking pretty good. Cool. She's good as new. She'd be better than new actually. Better than new. And if you're wondering, hey, where's Jopi? Well, he got caught with another case of massive diarrhea. So Adam and I are gonna have to pull this thing through the end. Mmm, crunchy. <laughs> now the head's ability to flow air is crucial to the performance of an engine. In the K20, it can suck some air in. Now basically the diameter of the intake valves as well as the angle of the intake runners determines how much air flows through the head. Now typically when you cast a head like this, there's some machining that needs to be done. From the factory, a guy will port match the intake ports and the exhaust ports, making sure you get a nice, good flow of air into the cylinder and exhaust gases out. Now this engine has four valves per cylinder. We got two intake, 
two exhausts. The intake valve diameter is 35 millimeters and the exhaust diameter is 30 millimeters. Now, one thing that's really cool about this valve train is that from the factory, we have upgraded valve springs. That's because when this engine's revving at close to 9,000 RPM, we don't want any valve float and they addressed that when they built this thing. Something very interesting and cool about this engine is that it has IV Tech. You've probably heard of V Tech, but have you heard of IV Tech? I stands for intelligent. Okay, so if you look here, we have our camshaft, and on our camshaft underneath it, we have our rockers. And the cool thing about these rockers is it gives us essentially two different cam profiles. So when you're just kind of at a lower RPM, uh, this cam is rotating and it's actually hitting these two outer lobes. But after you reach a certain RPM, oil pressure connects these three pieces right here and your center cam lobe, which is a more aggressive profile, pushes down on that, giving you longer lift and a little bit of extra timing to it, which allows for more power. But when you're just cruising around town and you don't need that aggressive profile, you're using the smaller one, so you have nice, good, fuel efficient inline four cylinder. What makes IV Tech so special is this guy right here. This camshaft is adjustable because of this sprocket. When filled with oil pressure, it'll either advance or retard the timing. And because of that, it gives us the ability to have power both on the low end and the top end, getting the best of both worlds. Good job, good pull. Good smack. Oh, Dude, did you hear that? That? Okay, so we got our timing marks aligned on all three spots. Chain tensioner in. We got new guides, which is nice, coming along nicely. All right. Go in at somewhat of an angle. Something real satisfying about that. Could we have rotated this before we put that on to confirm all that's good? Nope. Make sure there's no binding or anything. It'll be fine, Jerry. We've been following the instructions. You see that? Well, I don't know, but it goes with slack right there. I don't think it should ever go that slack. Oh, dude, we're still way off. Yeah, we're way, we're way. <sighs> okay, so. We scared ourselves a little bit, but we realized that the timing chain tensioner is pressurized with oil from the engine. It was causing this chain to kind of pull some slack and then get tight. But part of that was is we don't have maintained tension because we don't have oil pressure. That's okay. It's okay, we learned. Better thing we check now than uh, when we go to freaking fire this thing up. <laughs> don't go down that hole. Okay, water pump on. Is that correct? That goes before the intake manifold? Pop it off. So Adam is installing our intake manifold. That thing's made out of cast aluminum, which is nice because it's lightweight and it dissipates heat well, but it's nothing really all that special. However, the thing attached to it that is special is this throttle body. You can think of an engine really as just a big air pump. And the more air you can get inside those combustion cylinders, the more power you can make. And that's where the K20 really excels. This throttle body itself is 66 millimeters in diameter. Now more economy cars will probably be in the 50 to 60 range. So this is getting a lot more volume of air. And that's important because you can make more power, more torque, and have better throttle response. And that comes straight from the factory. Now, if you look at these runners, these things are chunky. Look how thick they are, and they're pretty long. So that's helping us get nice laminar airflow into the cylinders so we can make as much power as possible and be efficient in making that power. Coming along here. Exhaust manifold on. All right, the piece de resistance, the visual confirmation that says, hey, we're about done with this sucker. A red Honda valve cover. This should just slip on nice and easy. And it's easy as that.
if I had to put money on the Jay-Z lasting longer or this Kaylor lasting, I think the Jay-Z will last longer. Where is the doubt coming from? Is it because it's me and not Joe? To be honest though, I would trust you over Joby. Joby's blown up a bunch of motors. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a weight scale here to see how much this guy's gonna weigh. How did we lift it last time? One thing I don't trust is Adam's fucking strap <laughs> shenanigans. I don't wanna be right next to this strap that I have zero faith in. Oh. 266. 266. All right, Adam, so as it turns out, this thing's pretty hard to start while it's on a stand. Kinda is. Yeah, that IV tech, gotta talk to a lot of different sensors for it to even fire up. And to be honest, that's kind of a good ending point. This engine is what cemented IV tech in Honda's lineup. You know, you got a high horsepower, high revving, very small, compact engine that you can throw in anything. This thing is really a cool piece of engineering. One of the best engines that Honda has ever made. It's really cool. And we're just gonna skip the whole firing up on a stand and go straight to throwing it into a car. What car is that? I don't know. But if you guys have any ideas, leave a comment down below. Boost Creeps are back, baby. Brand new shirts, brand new design. We've also got posters, hats. So if you've got a torso, a wall, or a head, we've got you covered. What if you're saying, Jane, I don't have any of those things. All I have is a bunch of random surfaces. Well, we got you covered too. Brand new sticker pack. Go to donutmedia.com, get you some. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We gotta thank a lot of people that helped us get this engine put back together. Right. Club D Sport did all the machining, so if you guys need some engine work, go hit them up. Also my boy Jose, who brought us his Type R. Let us rip that sucker around. Follow Adam at Canapic Racing. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Follow Joby, even though he's not here. Follow, follow Joe. At Zach Joe. Bye.